Hey guys, Pete here. This will be my Better Call Saul Season 5 recap. I'm going to go through the whole thing, so this is going to be a long video, and it will definitely contain spoilers if you haven't watched Season 5 yet. I did recap and review videos for each episode as they aired, so I would recommend those videos if you're watching along, or if you want more details on the events of Season 5. Before we jump into Season 5, we should talk about where the characters were at the end of Season 4. The death of Jimmy's brother Chuck, and the aftermath of that, hung over Jimmy and Kim's side of the story throughout season four. Jimmy's license to practice law was suspended, so he had to complete a PPD program to get it back. That meant community service and a job, but it also meant that he had a lot of free time. The main thing that season four showed us in regard to Jimmy is that he is a damaged man. He seems incapable of processing his loss, which makes sense since his relationship with his brother was super complicated, and he starts acting out as a result. Slippin' Jimmy re-emerges, and his idea of selling drop phones to criminals sets the stage for the Saul Goodman persona to develop. Howard is falling apart in season four, and Jimmy is fine with letting him think that he's responsible for Chuck's death. Jimmy and Kim drift apart as she starts to focus on pro bono work to help her find balance in her career, and he's out there slinging cell phones. They come back together through some mutual scamming, and eventually Kim helps Jimmy get reinstated. Lalo Salamanca arrives to help Nacho run things, and makes it his business to be a pain in Gus's ass. This leads to Mike having to kill Werner, who would he'd become friends with. Jean Gene had an intense moment in his flash forward. He was admitted to the hospital after fainting at Cinnabon and got spooked on the taxi ride home. This is where we'll transition to the season five recap since the Gene teaser picks up right where this left off. In fact, season five starts with the longest Gene teaser we've seen so far. And as mentioned, it picks up right where the one from season four left off. Mr. Takovic is running scared after he thought a taxi driver with an Albuquerque air freshener recognized him. When he returns home, we see that he has a substantial stash of diamonds, which look to be enough for him to get out of town and start over if he needs to. We watch him playing it safe, driving across the border while watching a police scanner. After some paranoid time at home, he goes back to work and gets approached by that cab driver who we find out is named Jeff. Gene then calls Ed the Disappearer for another extraction, but changes his mind while he's still on the phone talking to him. He tells Ed, I'll fix it myself, and that's where we leave him until the season 6 opening teaser comes around. The Jimmy McGill timeline also picks up right where we left things, at the courthouse at the end of season 4. Jimmy changes his name so that he can practice law under Saul Goodman, and Kim doesn't like the idea. Later at their apartment, Kim lays things out after she gives Jimmy the JMM bag in the world's second best lawyer mug. She says she's worried that Jimmy is selling himself short. She's concerned that he works so hard to become a lawyer and this will all just backfire. He acknowledges her unease at one point by saying, this is why this works. I go too far and you pull me back. But they're not exactly on the same page. Kim's not getting why he thinks this is the best direction for his career, but it's clear that he's going to go ahead anyway. We see that they're out of sync with each other throughout the first few episodes of the season. In a telling exchange, he tells her that he can't go back to being Jimmy McGill. He says, Jimmy McGill, the lawyer, is always going to be Chuck's loser brother. The name is burned. This is how I move forward and I like it. Jimmy believes that becoming Saul is his best chance at success, and we see him working hard to get things going. Jimmy has his phone giveaway laying out his pitch for his legal services to everyone who comes in to get one. He's in classic Saul Goodman mode. He reverses course on a promise he made to Kim earlier, offering 50% off for nonviolent felonies when he runs out of phones. He ends up getting some clients, and he falls right into this new role of being a criminal lawyer. On the other side of things, we see a meeting go down with Juan Bolsa, Gus, and Lalo at the chicken farm. Gus uses some stepped-on drugs that he had Nacho plant to set up a cover story for the Werner incident. He shows them a new chicken chiller facility he's building, where Lalo gets to see Mike working for him. Lalo says that explains everything, and we know he isn't buying it. Bolsa tells the two men that they have to coexist. When they're alone together, Lalo brings up Santiago, and that makes us wonder if we're going to learn more about Gus's backstory in Chile. Later, Lalo goes to visit Hector at his assisted living facility. His uncle tells him to mess with Gus's money if he wants to weaken his position with the cartel. Lalo gets an idea on how to do this later when Domingo is arrested outside of one of their stash houses. 
Mike starts out in a bad place in the beginning of season five. He sends the Germans home and we can tell that he's struggling after killing Werner. He punches Kai in the face when he says that it had to be done, but lets Casper slide when he says that Werner was worth more than 50 of you referring to Mike. Mike tries to tell Gus he's done working for him, but Gus doesn't go along with it. He tells him that he will still be paid as a retainer and Mike tries to reject that. He spends the beginning of the season in a funk that takes him to dark places. He blows up on Kaylee after Stacy calls him up to babysit at the last minute. She started talking about Maddie and he ended up screaming at her. This becomes a wedge between him and his family because Stacy knows something's going on and obviously he can't come clean about what it is. He drinks heavily and gets into a couple of fights with a group of local tough guys who try to shake him down as he walks home. He wins the first in impressive fashion, but they overpower him the next time. He he gets stabbed and loses consciousness, and when he wakes up, he finds himself in Mexico. The spot Nacho finds himself at the beginning of season 5 isn't much better than Mike's. He's pulled out of bed by Tyrus and Victor and taken to where his dad's hanging out as a threat. Gus tells him he needs to know what Lalo is planning and tells him to find a way to gain his confidence. At one point Nacho cooks up a scheme to have someone buy his father's shop off of him so that he can get him to run away with him. His dad figures out that he's behind it and tells him if he wants to run go ahead and run but that he'll never leave. In the midst of Jimmy working his magic around the courthouse, he runs into Howard Hamlin. Howard looks to have bounced back from the low point we saw him in during the last season. He asks Jimmy to have lunch with him, and when they finally do, he offers him a job at HHM. To his credit, Howard apologizes for his past behavior, and the offer is sincere. He tells Jimmy to think about it and leaves it there. We see that the anger is still under the surface for Jimmy, though, and the hug goodbye and Howard's namaste license plate don't sit well with him. Jimmy has no intention of working for HHM, but he strings Howard along saying he's thinking about it whenever it comes up. Jimmy also sets out to hurt Howard through a couple of stunts. First, he sneaks up to his gate at night and throws bowling balls over it, damaging his car. Later, he sends a couple of prostitutes he was defending to interrupt a business lunch Howard was having with Cliff from Davis in Maine to publicly humiliate him. For all intents and purposes, Kim's career is going great. She's still got Mesa Verde, which, in the words of Rich Schweikert, keeps the lights on, and she feels like she's making a difference with her pro bono work. Things go sideways when she gets called away from said pro bono work and finds herself at odds with Mr. Acker. Acker is the lone holdout, refusing to leave his home so that Mesa Verde can move forward with plans to build a call center. When Kim can't fix this problem herself, she cooks up a plan that involves Jimmy acting as Acker's lawyer. Lawyer. Jimmy wins Acker over in one of the funniest scenes of the season and holds the construction up through a series of different interventions while Kim tries to change Mesa Verde's minds. Things start to get crazy as this subplot covers several episodes. No matter how easy they make it for him, Kevin won't back down to Acker. When that becomes clear, Jimmy suggests they give up, and it's Kim who wants to keep going. They try to get dirt on Kevin, who turns out to be clean, but Kim finds an angle to play when looking at photos they got from a PI that they hired. Eventually though, Kim decides to call things off rather than risking her position at Schweikert and Coakley. Jimmy reluctantly agrees in the moment, but later he has second thoughts. Things are mostly going Saul's way in his new practice until Nacho picks him up off the street outside the courthouse. He takes him to meet Lalo, who needs a lawyer to help him with his plan to cripple Gus's operation. He hires Jimmy to feed information to Crazy Eight in jail while acting as his lawyer. This leads to Hank and Gomi from the DEA making an appearance. It means Jimmy is now working for the cartel. I should mention that Jimmy isn't exactly enthusiastic about the development. Not surprisingly, he finds himself in way over his head later, but you have to give the credit to Lalo for getting him involved in the first place. As things develop, we realize that Lalo and Jimmy have a lot in common in their ability to talk people into doing what they want. Things escalate between Gus and Lalo. Acting on the tip from Crazy 8, the DEA makes a move on some of Gus's dead drops where dealers kick their earnings upstairs. Nacho was able to gain Lalo's confidence in a dramatic gesture during the stash house raid, so he's feeding Gus information the whole time. Gus has to let the DEA grab the money and a few of his low-level dealers in order to protect his inside man Nacho. 
Gus was responsible for Mike waking up in Mexico, and he visits him there to try to win him over. He tells him that he's in a war and needs a soldier. He says he's different from the Salamancas and that he thinks Mike understands revenge. He doesn't claim to be a good person, and it's interesting that Mike decides to work for him. It's more like Mike is accepting that this is what he's good at doing, rather than him getting on board with an alliance with Gus. Later, Mike will tell Stacy that he's decided to play the cards he's been dealt. He says this right after he's able to have a conversation with her about Maddie, which tells us that he's in a better place, and we see that he's made peace with being a button man for Gus as a means to an end of taking care of his family. In his new role, he goes after Lalo and is able to get him arrested for the travel wire murder. While he's working on that, he becomes the point of contact for Nacho. In their discussions, Mike learns that Nacho's father, who is not in the game, is being threatened to keep him in line. We know Mike has an issue with innocent people getting caught up in cartel violence, and so later he tries to go to bat for Nacho with Gus without success. Heading into the back half of the season, Kim and Jimmy are working together, which always seems to have a positive effect on their love life. After some early turbulence around Jimmy suggesting a scam on one of her pro bono clients, things come back around for our favorite couple. We watch this unfold through some nice scenes on the balcony together, and as Kim does an impression of Kevin that turns Jimmy on. Things take a turn when Jimmy shows up and surprises everyone, including Kim, by moving ahead with their plan when she was expecting him to settle the Acker case. It's glorious to watch it unfold, but the whole time we're worried about how this decision will affect Kim. Schweikert and Coakley try to strategize how to hit back, but Kevin takes matters into his own hands, calling Jimmy on the phone. They meet in the parking garage to discuss the terms. Jimmy gets everything he wants, and Kim has plausible deniability, since she didn't know what he was up to. Later, Kim comes home pissed at Jimmy for making her the sucker in the scam. He tries to talk her down, but she unloads on him. She says, you turn you and me versus the bank into you versus me. She says that she can't trust him. It seems like she's had enough and is really ready to leave. But as she's talking, she comes up with a plan. She shocks everyone by suggesting that they get married instead. The next day, Jimmy and Kim discuss the terms of their new full disclosure honesty pact before the wedding. Huel arrives and they start the paperwork for the marriage license, and they both express that they're doing this for legal reasons. But during the ceremony, we see they have real affection for each other, and it's more than just a legal arrangement. And just like that, Kim becomes Jimmy's third wife. After the wedding, Jimmy meets with Lalo in the interview room at the jail. Lalo tells him he doesn't want to make a deal and that he wants bail. He throws a, do you want to be a friend of the cartel out there to try to get Jimmy on board? At this point in the season, there's a lot going on. Lalo turns out to be just as much of a problem in jail as he was on the outside, and he tasks Nacho with burning down one of Gus's restaurants. Gus meets with Lydia and Peter Schuler from Magical Electromotive because Schuler's worried about their business arrangement. Gus has to calm him down, and in that we learn that they know each other from Chile. With Mike's help, Jimmy is able to get Lalo bail. They hired people to pretend to be Lalo's family, and the family of the travel wire victim is in the courtroom as well. Jimmy is thrown off when he sees them, and we can see that it makes things difficult for him, but he still pulls it off. The judge grants Lalo a $7 million cash bond. He says he can get that, but he's going to need Jimmy to pick it up for him. Out in the hall, we see Jimmy watching Fred's family. Howard approaches him. He calls him out about the car and the prostitutes. He says, Jimmy, I'm sorry you're in pain. And that sets Jimmy off. He launches into a tirade that concludes with him saying, lightning bolts shoot from my fingertips. Because of their new honesty policy, Jimmy tells Kim he's going to pick up the bail money. She doesn't like it, and she doesn't want him to go. And basically, the only thing he can tell her is that it won't be a problem. Of course, things don't go as planned. He gets ambushed by a group of bandits that we later learn Juan Bolsa hired in an effort to protect Gus's business. Stopping Jimmy would keep Lalo in jail, where he would be less of a problem in Bolsa's eyes. He doesn't know that Gus is trying to get him out, so he'll go back to Mexico where he can try to assassinate him. Mike is able to save Jimmy from being killed, but they end up stranded in the desert when Jimmy's esteem dies on them. They take a brutal hike through the desert, but manage to get the money to the 
the court and get Lalo out of jail. There's no cell reception on their journey, so Kim is left to worry about why Jimmy didn't make it home. In desperation, she goes to see Lalo in jail, which puts her on his radar, and he knows he can use that to his advantage. Mike also learns that Jimmy told Kim where he was going, and he says, now she's in the game. He's right, of course, but Jimmy doesn't want to believe it. At home, Kim takes care of Jimmy, who doesn't tell her the truth about what happened when he has the chance. He asks her about meeting with Lalo, and then tells her, I'm in the game, you're not in the game. He makes her promise to never meet with Lalo again and she agrees. Kim asks if it was all worth it and he tells her to go look inside his bag. He wanted her to see the $100,000 he made, which she does, but she also sees the mug with the bullet hole in it. She doesn't tell him that she saw it yet and she just lets him continue to lie. Jimmy struggles with PSD for the rest of the season and she does her best to be there for him. At the close of the ninth episode, Kim arrives home to find Jimmy in bed. She tells him that she quit her job, and he gets upset, saying that she's making a bad decision. They argue, with her making her case, until there's a knock at the door. It's Lalo, and he wants answers. It turns out that he turned around before heading to Mexico because he found the esteem, and now thinks Jimmy is lying to him about what happened. He keeps making him repeat his story, which is incredibly intense. Jimmy isn't his normal self after the desert, and he he's terribly worried about Kim. He's not able to talk himself out of the situation and almost breaks when Lalo tells him he saw the bullet holes in the car. Kim actually has to step in and she rises to the occasion. She's able to turn things around and Lalo eventually leaves. He tells Nacho the plans changed and they're both going to Mexico. Mike, who had been listening through Jimmy's phone and watching through his rifle scope, is able to stand down. Lalo and Nacho retreat to his hacienda, and after a trip to Don Eladio's, we see Gus's assassination attempt take shape. In the end, both Lalo and Nacho make it out alive. Nacho opened the gate for the assassins after creating a diversion in the kitchen. He makes it outside the compound, but we don't know how far he made it from there. Lalo hatches a plan on the fly to use his escape tunnel as a trap for the attackers. Instead of running away when he makes it outside, he returns to the house and is able to dispatch them. He uses the last living assassin to make a call to his bosses to tell him that the job is done. He notices the decanter that Nacho brought out telling us that he suspects he was involved. He sees his favorite cook murdered in the driveway as he walks away from the house with murderous rage and thoughts of revenge written all over his face. While this is all going down, Jimmy and Kim are holed up at a hotel. They decided to leave the apartment after Lalo took off and Jimmy came clean about what happened in the desert. They stay there for most of the finale other than a short trip to Mike's for Jimmy where he learned that Lalo was supposed to be killed and a trip to the courthouse where Kim ran into Howard. These two encounters shape the setup for the next season. With Jimmy thinking they're safe now because Lalo will be taken out of the picture, he decides that maybe it would be best if they separated to keep Kim away from the cartel. On hearing this, she doubles down on the relationship and tells Jimmy about her conversation with Howard over dinner. The way Howard came at her set Kim off and they start talking about continuing to mess with him. It starts out innocently enough but as the night goes on, Kim hatches a serious plan. She tells Jimmy that they could set up Howard for something that would get him in enough trouble that the other interested parties would want to settle the Sandpiper class action suit. Jimmy and Kim would stand to pick up $2 million if that happened, and Kim says she would open a pro bono office with it to provide people with limited means the same kind of representation that millionaires get. Jimmy tries to put on the brakes saying that Kim would not be okay with this if she ruined Howard's career. Because for all his shortcomings, Howard doesn't deserve something like that. Kim doubles down again responding to Jimmy, wouldn't I, when he says she wouldn't be okay with it. And she walks away from the bed, turning with finger guns shooting in Jimmy's direction. Jimmy doesn't look like he's completely on board with the plan, and he's not sure what to make out of what just happened with Kim. It leaves us to wonder if they'll really go through with it next season, and if Kim will be the one breaking bad before all is said and done. And with that, I will leave it there. Check out my Season 5 Ending Explained video for more about the ending if you want to dig in deeper. And please like this video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. If you're watching this right after Season 5 ended, you'll probably want to watch it again before Season 6 starts up. And I'll be covering other great TV series between now and then. Thanks for watching and special thanks to all of you who supported my channel and watched Better Call Saul Season 5 with me. I'll talk to you soon.